Hello, welcome to Lugal's World. Today we're doing a sample synastry reading that you that can be your synastry reading if you have someone that you're interested in and you want to see how will this work long term, what's what's going on with their astrology, where does it work, where does it not work. Please, you know, if you enjoy this video, if you're inspired, go and book a Patreon session become one of our members and you can have your own synastry with whoever, even friends and family. So Isaac, tell me about my synastry with this person and what's happening. Give me all the, the juicy, the good, the bad yes. and ugly. Yeah. So this is a great example because we've got a bit of everything in this chart, which is always fun. Um, so so when, I, when I go about um, doing synastry readings, it's not, it's not a sort of you know, are, are you good for each other? Are you bad for each other? Is it going to work? That sort of thing. It's trying to identify what the sources of um, harmony or the the archetypes which line up well with each other and which are going to be easily synchronized. And then it's also pointing out where the where the um, the points of polarity and tension are, are, are going to be, which we sort of see expressed through oppositions and squares in the chart as opposed to let's say um, conjunctions and trines which would expect to be a bit more harmonious and working naturally well with each other so if if we get that full picture and we can see all the different aspects all the different um, dynamics that are at play then it allows someone to sort of to understand the I guess the places of support and the places of challenge that they're going to feel in that relationship and then they can and then you know you can start to see are the challenges worth the effort if that makes sense you know is are, are, are the potential sources of harmony and support and balance worth the the sort of what is it worth um the process of working through those kinks those points of tension those polarities where you see things at opposite ends of the, of the spectrum and these things are really healthy and necessary for us to grow as individuals, you know, to be challenged, to move outside of our comfort zone, to feel different energies. You know, so if you're someone who doesn't have, say, a square in their chart, it's going to be great for you to be in a relationship with someone who you have a square dynamic with because it's pushing you out of your comfort zone. It's forcing you to deal with tension and conflict and friction in a way that you might not necessarily be used to. So you can see how, you know, it can be easy to look at a chart and say, oh, fuck, there's like red everywhere. What do I do? Oh, no. Um, but to sort of see things in the full picture, to see where where you, where, um, where you get this necessary balance in life between, you know, things which work well together and things which puts the art side of our comfort zone. So let's let, let's start. Let's start. So I've showed in. I've talked long enough already about random stuff. So I would look straight towards... I guess the 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 archetypes in, in the chart which which synchronize, which are similar, which would which would give someone a similar purpose or um, experience of life. And so the first thing I saw was was two uh, Sun Pluto conjunctions. So you both have Sun Pluto widely, not widely, but you know between sort of like five to seven degrees conjunct. So your natural let's call it daytime personality, the way that you operate um consistently um routinely on a daily basis where the way that you show up in the world your core identity and the way that you shine your light into the world if you take that having a sun pluto the light that you shine into the world is going to have a certain um dark tint to it if dark or deep or intense sort of framing to it when you when you sort of pass through life when you're negotiating different different um, you know um, scenarios in professional life in personal life in um, dealing with other people you're both going to want you're both going to be um, conditioned to lean into the deeper darker more intense aspects of of um, of these interactions of these experiences so that's going to suit you guys well because you know that you're both going to want to lean into these lean into the deeper aspects of life and be comfortable with doing that and so you know that you've got that common ground there that you can sort of push boundaries and go a bit deeper than other people might want to 
and the idea of Plato is that it also initiates or it leads us towards the act of transformation. And so to some Pluto people will be comfortable undergoing transformation of the self, of our core identity, which is one of the main significations of the sun. We're going to be comfortable initiating transformation in each other or going through that transformation process together. That's going to be something that you're very comfortable with. And so there's a lot of overlap and harmony there. So that's what that one of the main things that came out straight away. And then if you look, look at the moon, we see an almost perfect set style between your two moons. So almost exactly 60 degrees apart. So this really nice underlying emotional support is there. So, you, so you're going to have, um, you're going to be able to provide a source of care, of nurture, of comfort to, to each other, as well as having that, you know, as you're going through these periods of, of deepening, of transformation, of um, even periods of intensity. So some Pluto is going to find itself in intense situations very naturally. It's just going to happen. So you've got, you know, these are the, the two most um, core dominant archetypes of our personality, Sun and Moon, and you have that really nice alignment there. So straight away I'm seeing, you know, this core, these core daytime and nighttime personalities have this really nice connection and really nice supporting aspects to each other. So there's that, and then there's a few other things which stand out to me straight away. So a few very obvious conjunctions. So your Mercury, your two Mercuries, both um, both have conjunctions with the others. So we have a, a Pluto Mercury um, conjunction. Uh, so that's right over, right close to the galactic center as well, which is very much Plut Plutonic, Scorpionic energy, particularly if you look, look at it from a sidereal perspective. So again, there's this comfortable going into intellectual depths or, or bouncing off each other very, you know, deep, deep, um, intense, um, even compelling modes of communication. There's going to be that, that synchrony there between the intellect and modes of, of communication. Um, and then the other, on the other Mercury is then conjunct with Mars. So we see a lot of Mars synchs in this chart. So there's going to be, it's going to be a, a lot of, you know, there's going to be a lot of masculine um, energy in this relationship. It's going to be quite sexual, probably, because Mars is the more overt sexual planet, I, I guess. If we, the polarity to, to Venus is, you know, the more romantic, loving side, whereas Mars is just, let's just do it, for want of a better term. So we've got a, a lot of Mars seats going on. So we have some good ones in terms of uh, uh, Mercury-Mars polarity. Um, Mercury-Mars is um, sharp, sharp wit, sharp words, assertive words, very competitive, so there's going to be competitive uh, nature as well, some underlying competitiveness, but a very, it's you know, not a overly competitive um, vibe as well. So, and that's healthy as well, and that that will then sink in with with this sort of Pluto Sun vibe as well. You know, healthy healthy competition, working off it, it, each other to sort of go a bit deeper. Um, so, yeah, that's a really that's a really nice nice sort of sink there as well. We look at some other things going on with Mars. We have a um, we have a Sun, a Sun Mars trine. So again, supportive, supportive, um, supportive in terms of um, a relationship with is very active, where each each party is able to assert themselves and express themselves and make themselves um, uh, make themselves. Um, known and heard again that mars mercury is wanting to be heard wanting to make sure that we're heard and seen as well because mars has a physical presence so there's going to be need to be that dynamic within the relationship as well and this the, the sun mars is a really nice really nice um harmonizing energy there between a sun pluto and and a, a mars assertiveness so i really, really like that and then we have another um Another aspect between Mars and Saturn here. So we have a really interesting Mars Saturn vibe. So it's actually, um, if we sort of take that, take those sources of support, now we can contrast them with a few sources of like polarity and tension, which make sure, which make sure things don't get too comfortable. Make sure you're still pushing, you know, pushing Arthur's buttons just a bit and pushing each other towards that transformative, that co co transformative um, dynamic. So we have a T square between Mars. 
Saturn, and then Saturn. So it's like um, a Mars, Saturn, Saturn, T-square, which is really interesting. Um, and this is very topical as well, because we're actually just coming into a Mars, Saturn, square in real time. So we're, we're filming this on the 3rd of April, and on the 10th of April, we're going to have a Mars, Saturn um, conjunction. So it's interesting that this relationship has popped up just as we're coming to this conjunction in real life. So I think an underlying dynamic of this relationship, yes, we got Sun Pluto, but then also Mars Saturn will be very much part of this as well. And that's not that's not it, it, easy. So, you know, there, there's no sugar coating or rose tinted glasses here. Saturn Mars are, are the two uh, malefics traditionally. So they could often seen as the hardest planets to deal with. And when they, they, they come together, we have themes like you know, tests of tests of um, our ability to assert ourselves, tests of our sexuality, um, tests of our ability to fully embody our masculine self, which is that active that activeness, that assertiveness, um, taking life taking life by the horns. You know, willpower, endurance, um, this sort of thing. And Saturn Mars is very much about endurance. You know how how can we really apply ourselves with, with with will with strength onto something and that's where saturn sort of brings in that idea of like uh mastery discipline and mastery so we combine those two with the mars we can see what the benefits are um but there's gonna be a lot of it's gonna take really conscious effort to to bring out the best in that mars saturn dynamic there as well but the, the plus side is you, you have the chance to align or to deal with, to really work through that T-square dynamic over the next week or so as we come to this Mars Saturn. So it's a perfect moment to establish um, establish that d dynamic or to work through that d dynamic really early on. So you're both aware of what that is and how that might ma that ma uh, might manifest. And then you've sort of, you've almost um, set that in place as and so nothing will then surprise you if that makes sense in terms of how that mars saturn thing might might pop up so yeah that's also done with how we can use synastry and uh, and sort of apply it to the real time um transits that are going on as well so there's a few so we've got this mars pluto dynamic uh, sorry this sun pluto dynamic and then this mars saturn dynamic going on so there's some of the key things to keep in mind there's a few other really interesting interesting um things we have going on as well so a few really nice a few really nice nice um counterpoints to that malefic sort of energy so we have an almost exact neptune pluto um no sorry almost exact neptune venus oh nice so neptune venus is probably the most um the loveliest co combination you might say um you know venus is obviously Venus is is love, desire, romance, values, what we value and keeping our values at heart to the core of who we are and beauty, love of beauty, love of everything that is that is, you know, that is taught that is Taurian. So, you so know, it's like um, living, living uh, really interesting. I, I sort of love the, the dynamic that I'm seeing sort of um, unfold here. So we have what seems like a quite intense T square. So like Mars, Saturn, Saturn. So um, sort of your your ninth house Saturn is the apex of the, of the T-square. So that's the point of, of, of release. So that's something that you have to keep in mind about how you find that that re relief to that tension with your with your sort of Saturn right at the mid at the mid heaven. So like ninth, tenth house cusp. So that's gonna be a key challenge for you to sort of work through that. Um, and then there's also there's also another opposition. So we've got as a, a, a moon Uranus opposition as well which can be you know emotionally disruptive sort of like emotional polarization quite sudden fluctuating change in emotions so there might be that underlying dynamic as well but that's that that's in that opposition that's sort of a matter of balance so making sure again you have that emotional support underlying it with the two with, with your two moons sextiling so we got those things going on and also uh, there's a bit of a sort of a t-square um so sort of you, you've got a, a square between your moon and sun, and then that then forms a, a T-square with with um, his Uranus as well. So there's another little point of tension there. So that's something to sort of work through. But then with all that go, going on, we have this lovely, this lovely undercurrent to the relationship. So we have a, a Venus-Neptune 
conjunction and it's really close. It's actually two minutes. So like, yeah, two, uh, two minutes of one degree. So it seems like the, the grace would be the idealism, but it would be like, be able to be present all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like Venus, Neptune, idealism is the perfect word, I think. You know, there's, there's just a love of life, a love of beauty, a love of spirituality, you know, almost this, this, with this urge to just meld or blend into the, the loveliness of life and to just be be in it at all times. And so the the trick there is this idea of like losing touch with reality or a too much naivety about about things. So to get lost too too lost in that Neptune Venus without without actually keep putting energy towards those points of sort of polarity and tension. But just, just the fact that you have, you know, a, a two minute conjunction between Neptune and Venus is just such a lovely comfort zone to hold in that relationship. So, to, you know, to really make the most of that and to just, you know, luxuriate when necessary in that. Um, so, yeah, and, and there's other there's other quite lovely things going on as well. So let's bring in Jupiter. So we have a quite close, um, so a two degree shine between Jupiter and Venus. So again, that's a, it's a similar vibe. It's a bit less less dreamy. It sort of brings things back to reality a bit because Jupiter is still um, Jupiter is still a very human human archetype. It's not you know it's um, we we can put we can anthropomorph anthropomorphize it quite easily compared to something like Neptune, which is more ethereal, elusive, um, intangible. So Venus Neptune, uh, sorry Venus Jupiter, it's wealth for sure. So you know. Venus wow. and Jupiter are Venus Jupiter are the, are the two sort of wealth planets, so there's a really nice alignment there. Yeah, um, then did they you both... see that that super good um, mid heaven? There was like a mid heaven conjunction or something. So it things seems like they might be able to help my career. Yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, there, there's definitely a link there, um, and I think that's the that's the point of of your of that Mars Saturn T square. Is, is in your sort of ninth, tenth house cast right near your midheaven. So, so it's working through that that T square, which is which is where the benefits in, in a professional, reputational career sense will come. Yeah, so I, I love that. So you've got this sort of dreaminess underneath it. So if we go back to Venus, um, Venus and Jupiter, you know, that's values, higher minded values. Um, so having a very spiritual, ethical moral basis foundations for the relationship uh, that's how i was to see that venus jupiter emerging and actually his his jupiter is almost exactly conjunct your north node as well so there's wow. actually a link so you can sort of see in him a, a higher minded purpose if we sort of look at the, uh, uh, the north node as your underlying mission purpose trajectory and having jupiter right there you can sort of see you know you can see um, a dignified, higher-minded, noble, truth-orientated future in this person. That's sort of how I would read that. And then that that Jupiter, which is conjunct your North Node, is then part of that 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 trine to Venus. So you've got these two really lovely aspects, supporting aspects underlying this relationship. So Venus Neptune, and then Venus Jupiter, and then you've got that Sun Pluto, then the Moon sextile. That's the that's the that's the support structure that's the harmony underlying it and then both of you grounding yourself in that and knowing that that's there and then you can then branch out and work on these oppositions and squares and really utilize that you know that tension that polarity to move it other forward to really lean into that Mars Pluto transformative transformative um, mutually transformative dynamic that you have going on there as well so yeah hopefully that's a really good example and this this was such a perfect chart to sort of start with could we have a bit of everything here and you can see if you can identify not be scared off not be scared off just by looking at, at a sinistry chart and seeing opposition oh no square oh no look at the whole picture see the good and see what well, no let's not even say good about let's see the opportunities and see the challenges and see how they work together and having that holistic holistic understanding of the chart can allow you to then 
lean into the challenges when you need to, or then fall back to that comfort zone when it, when it is needed as well. So yeah, hopefully that was a, a, a good overview, a good case study of, of how we plan to do these synastry charts, these synastry readings. And again, you know, there's, you're not going to get any easy, easy answers here. You know, you're not going to get yes, no, you know, ditch them now or marry them tomorrow. We're not going to do that sort of stuff. It's going to be for you, giving you the starting point to understand the dynamics of a relationship and then to take that in the direction that you see fit with your own free will. Beautiful. What would you say the, how long term would it uh, potentially, are there any factors uh, for long, long termness? I mean, there's, when I think like long term endurance, endurance is Mars Saturn. So um, the enduring nature of this relationship is lies in your ability to, or your capacity or your willingness to deal with that T square, to deal with that Mars Saturn T square. If you can do, if you can negotiate that, if you can work through the tension, work through the polarity, then like, Mars Saturn has endurance, has longevity written all over it. So it's it's uh it's my Saturn against his Mars or his Mars against my Saturn. So it's a so you have a square between your Saturn and Mars in your chart, and then his Saturn squares your Saturn and opposes your Mars. So that's the dynamic there. So it so it, it, it's your natal square between Saturn and Mars that, that then gets formed into a T square through that um through his Saturn coming into the in, into the party there. Wow, that's intense. Well, thanks everyone who joined. Please go get your sinister reading. Head over to our Patreon, become a member. We would love to dig in, give you tarot reading, astrology reading, get to the surface of like if this, you know, what's happening with this potential relationship or the relationship you already have. Let's investigate, um, illumine some things. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, tell us your thoughts. Uh, we, we love reading the comments. Continue to make this the most exciting mystical 5D Ascension community as we get ready for the new Earth. Let's go and build um, a great future together. So peace, many blessings.